Hello, my name is Brooks Cossover, and I'm an oil painter. And here I'm with my good friend, Sir Spence. <sighs> That's it, I need some milk. Where's my sister? <clears throat> yes, and uh, Hi. so today we're going to Sorry. be, mm, yeah, it's fine. We're gonna be uh, making a painting, and uh, it's going to be of this image right here. Painting, we're gonna be painting a painting. Yes, painting a painting, yes. Uh, do you know, it's gonna be so hard to keyframe if you're moving all around like that. Do you understand? I'm sorry. It's fine, like, don't worry. All right, anyway. You said over do you here know? and there wasn't do enough you know? room. Do you know? You're doing fine. You're doing terribly. So basically what's gonna to happen today is I'm going to be breaking down the painting, which we'll be doing. I've already sketched it out. And Dino here has helped me mix these colors. And so we're pretty much good to go when it comes to the surface drawing and colors. We're not gonna mess with any of that. What we want to do is focus on making this painting in seven steps. Now for each of the steps, I'm going to be asking you a question, which you can answer in whatever way or not answer at all if that's your choice. All right, stage number one, the background. No, the mask, Jim Carrey, right? Talk a little bit about this scene. Uh, this is from The Mask, uh, with uh, the scene where Cameron Diaz is, is singing for uh, Jim Carrey, and uh, he gets uh, really horny in public, and he starts howling and hooting and hollering, and I like to think of him as the original fuckboy, this wolf character here. Mm. It always, you know, inspired me as a kid. I, All I right, this is so boring, boy. this is hey, so boring. Hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of passion. He has a lot of passion. Let's he's turn, ruining, he's ruining let's that. Let's turn that passion into a painting. What do you say? You're, you don't really look like an artist right now, Spencer. We need to change that. So you have your choice of the Van Gogh painter's no, hat or the French? One. Not the, that one. Not this one. No. So get the, I don't want to. I don't okay. Like the French painter's hat then. Okay. Okay. Nice. I think you actually wore that very hat in the Chirley's video. Mud flap's been wearing that, so air it out a little bit. Just flapping some mud out of it. <laughs> All right, so the first question that I'm going to be asking you, Spencer, while you paint in the background, stage one of the seven stages, is uh, give me your origin story. Will you tell me your origin story? I had to put the question mark on the end of it. Will you tell me your origin story? Uh, yeah. So, I was born in San Diego, and then I watched The Mask, and I decided I wanted to, uh, like, be an actor, and be, I wanted to be Jim Carrey really bad. And then, as I got older, um, my parents tried to help a little bit with supporting that dream. So uh, my mom had me join her friend's uh, Christian youth theater. And then I thought I didn't want to act ever again mm -hmm. after that. Because, the Christian youth theater. Yeah, because I didn't feel like I belonged. Because I didn't. Because they would pray and I was like, oh shit, I'm Jewish. And then <laughs> I wanted to do music production forever, so I did that for a long time, but everything uh, led back to the, all those roads led back to the same place, which was uh, uh, like comedy and acting and, mm -hmm. and making silly videos, because I just uh, always ended up doing that for fun anyway. I actually am giving up on that too, and I'm gonna probably just do this. Okay, yeah, so I feel really still, my, still my job. Yeah, yeah, I feel really good about that. Mommy. Now, do you know? Go ahead and, and get over here while he's doing it because he's gonna, gonna, yeah, be able he needs to, a look exactly, around. He's gonna need to see what's going on. Okay, so Spencer, let's go ahead and uh, move to question number two. Now, for question number two, um, you stumble across a magical mirror, all right? And in that mirror, you see a reflection of your younger self. The magic of this mirror is that you will be able to transport into the head and mind almost as if you're sitting in a movie theater of your younger self on that day that you see the reflection in. What day would you travel back to in the past that you could experience it? Any um, day in your entire childhood, you just get to sit back. You don't get to affect your actions. You only get to witness that day once again. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, like I said, I was Jewish earlier, mm -hmm. but I grew up celebrating Christmas and Hanukkah because mm -hmm. my mom wasn't Jewish, but my dad was. You fucking faker. I'm just kidding, I did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was probably the best thing ever, but like um, when Zelda Ocarina of Time came out, mm -hmm. that Christmas or the one a couple before it when uh, N64 and like um, Mario Kart dropped, uh -huh. that was pretty uh, magical. Yeah, those were good days. Yeah. Oh, I got a little black on there. It's all right. Just rub it back off into there. Remember these? Where do I rub it? Right here. He likes this. Mm-hmm. It's meant to. And this painting will be for sale online on my store. Now, the next thing that we want to do 
is focus really on the cool, cool areas and lie in that colder tone. Go ahead and see, because there's a bit more cool going on in this part of him. Over here too. And you just want to make sure to spread it across thin enough that you can still see the underline of what's going on over here. The hand here is all really in that cool blue light. So. Jim Carrey. <laughs> Jim Carrey. <laughs> yes. Do you have another question? Is this another stage? I like when daddy tells me what to do. All right. Okay. Okay, cool. So I think that you want to go ahead and show. I think we've got pretty much most of the transparent mother colors lined in there as well as the background. So stage number three, like I said, I work back to front and dark to light. So now that we have the mother colors in, it's time to lie in those darks, baby. So stage three are the darks. Let's go. Okay, so now that we're in stage three, the darks, I'm going to ask you a pretty dark question. Are you okay with that? No. Here's the hypothetical. You wake up in what's called a dissociative fugue. Now, what a dissociative fugue is, basically you lose all autobiographical sense of self and you're left with only your basic motor functions, whatever habits your body is used to doing, or um, just, you know your learned ability. So you don't know who you are, all you have is just everything up to this point that your body and mind retains other than your sense of self. So you have to live out an entire day in a disassociative fugue. What do you think a disassociative Spencer would do in a day? Um, probably like live stream and just like talk to people about how confused I am. I'd probably complain a lot. So I'd kind of do that a lot and I feel like if I was dissociating, I would have to tell everybody. I would probably go for a walk for a really long time. If part of what you described as my like learned abilities includes going in incognito tab, <laughs> then we'll probably do that. And I might learn a couple things about who I really am because if I don't have any like preconceived notions of who I am, then going into different porn categories wouldn't be something I hesitate to do, so maybe I'll find out <laughs> different things about like my interests that I wasn't aware of All when, right, I, when yeah. I had this identity. A little bit deeper into your sexuality, I, I can dig it. I can definitely dig it. Don't get any ideas. All right, fine. I know you know how to gaslight, but please don't put me in a dissociative fugue. <laughs> I know what you'll try to do to me. Now we're going to refer just to the reference photo. And we want to see what are the darkest places in it. I'm going to move now to a size one round so that we can get into a little bit more details. Let's focus on the darkest areas first. Now I'm seeing the immediately, tie. exactly, we got the tie. So, um, I'll do it. Go ahead. Yeah, I love this. Yeah, you're, it's your painting. So go ahead. And if you're ever on it. the show, don't let him paint for you. <laughs> do you feel like Brooks gaslights you? Dino, you're doing good. Thank you. Give him that confidence, okay? He needs to be humbled. He's an apprentice. Apprentices need to be humbled so they have context for later on in their careers. It's how I became as good of a painter as I am. Dino's level 12, okay? He's, getting, he's almost level 13 now. It's gaslighting 101, guys. <laughs> feel so psychologically manipulated. Do y'all even know what gaslighting means? Yeah, of course. Yeah, do you even know the novel that it's from? Uh, no. I didn't know how to like an origin. It does story. have an origin. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not from a novel. You know, yeah. give, give me this camera right now. Well, do you know what gaslighting, the origin of why it's called gaslighting? Uh, no. It's because uh, there was a guy who like kept lying to his wife and saying that she was like lighting the gas. She, he eventually convinced her that she was crazy. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. that makes sense then. But it wasn't her. Oh, now I'm learning how to gaslight with Dino. I love that for this video. Thank you, Dino. <laughs> Don't worry about doing We're working back dark to light and, uh, and back to front. So see how you're putting in those whiskers in now? Mm -hmm. You want to do the highlights before you do those whiskers. So really, that's fine. What you're going to want to do is just take this to the next dark place. Fill in those pupils. I'm in a pretty dark place. Yeah, aren't we all though? Fourth stage, fourth question. You find an old doorway. Now this is an interesting doorway because the thing about this doorway is when you close your eyes, you turn that knob and you walk through it, 
whatever world that you're imagining is the world you walk into. You could be walking into Bikini Bottom in SpongeBob. You could be walking into Hogwarts. Do you remember uh, Half a Lumps and Woozles? I, I, I don't know. What, what is I that? I walk into that world. It's from Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Oh, bunch hell of yes, dude. Okay. It's basically like these giant, uh, like polka dotted elephants and like weasel guys mm -hmm. called Half a Lumps and Woozles. Right. And it's kind of like a weird, bad psychedelic. DMT trip or something. So that's what you. That's where. That's where you'd walk into. That's what I saw. Yeah. All right. Well, let's continue on with this a little bit. Uh, maybe. Uh, who, who would you be within that universe? Are you going to be one of the uh, the characters who already exists, or are you going to be your own character? I'd be that uh, scene in the Jungle Book mm -hmm. where Mowgli like smokes from a peace pipe or something, and then he's like tripping balls and his eyes are green. So you're going to be uh, a small native child who's under the influence. Yes. Okay. Interesting choice. Yeah. Don't sue me, Disney. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to add in some of the, we're still working on the highlights, though adding in the lights, but now let's go into the second lightest thing, which I would say are the yellows and the shirt. Now we're going to be using Rublev lead tin yellow. This does feel how heavy this is. This does contain lead, so don't eat it. But besides that, no, you'll be fine. <laughs> Not enough to kill you, but you know, enough that you need to proceed with caution. Now. Here, you know, I think we could, what we want to do is add just a little bit of more Indian yellow to that to create a brighter chroma because value and color are different. When you have a little bit of extra color in there, it's going to pop. What I like to do is look at things in black and white. I'll take my phone out and I'll have it in black and white to be able to see the difference between the value and the color because red pops forward, but in black and white, red is a very dark gray. Mm. So we'll look to see. Right here, we have this going on. Go ahead and start to pull in those light areas to where you see the light taking place. Tap back into it if you need to, and just really push it into the surface. Put a lot of pressure? You don't need to necessarily put a lot of pressure onto it. Oh, uh, what do you mean when you say push in, just paint? Yeah. Oh, okay. Should I cover the whole thing or just where it looks the brightest? Just where it looks the brightest here. Let me zoom in. I mean, open it up a little bit more for you. I like this part. Kind of see it more coming together here. Yep. Seven easy stages. I just threw some cadmium yellow light right there. Why don't you try pushing some of that into it? Just take a big old glob of it. Yep. And mix it all into what's already happening on the surface to increase the chroma of it so you can see. See what's happening? Mm -hmm. Even though technically that value is not much different, the chroma it's increased and so it uh, pulls forward in space. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The difference between value and color. How do you, do you have to study the value to know? To know them better? It all comes with color theory and um, really just looking and seeing and understanding what you're seeing through looking. You know, a lot of people, they think, oh, people's eyes, they're white. You know, the whites of people's eyes, that's what they're called, but they're not white. If anything, they're several shades lighter than the skin tone. When in my paintings, like you can look around and see, I'm not painting so naturalistically. Like I mix colors in a way where this is not ex really how people look, but the way we're doing things today is we're gonna try to stay as real to the colors we possibly can. It's important to know how to do things. And once you know how to do them, then you can defy what you're supposed to do. Yeah. You know, Picasso, Matisse, all the greatest painters, they were incredibly classically trained. See a snout? Yes. The bright part? Yep, you can pop that in there, right? Perfect. Good, Spencer, you're learning. Now, if it's getting really bright, you can go ahead and add a little bit more white into it. But remember, when you're adding white, it might increase and lighten the value, but what's going to happen is you'll see it washes out the chroma. So you really want to try as hard as you can to maintain the perfect balance of chroma to value. Without it getting too washed out, you still want to maintain that color. Don't know how to do that, and I don't know what it means. Okay, well. All right, so now we've added in the warm highlights. Let's go ahead and start doing the cool highlights. Check it out here, see we've got this nice, cool sort of blue taking place, a little bit here, a little bit here, and some right there. So I'm thinking we got some nice cobalt teal here, and that's looking pretty nice. So take this and see where the highlights take place. Go ahead and just sort of punch that in there. You see how it gets a little bit darker in areas like that? See, because now you're using the lights, the light, when what you could do, add just a bit more of that cobalt teal into it. And then also, we can also put that down where the hand is. 
It's about the turn of the hand. Now check this out, Dino. See how he just placed down this really intensely chromed color? It's high chroma. What I would recommend doing is even though, yes, this is darker, I think it's probably a little bit too bright. Yeah, yeah. So if this was in black and white, that would be right because the value would be correct, but mm -hmm. the color would not be. So what we can do is take a little bit of this gamsol here, desaturate it a bit with our chromatic black, like so. So we've got a bit of our chromatic black in there. And now take it. See how it's not as bright? Mm -hmm. Kind of blend it out in this way, back there. Now the next thing we want to do is put in some of these mid-tones, which, you know, in between the darks and the lights. So for instance, look how Spencer popped in these highlights here in his shirt. But they don't appear too bright against the surface of, uh, you know, this mother color that we placed in earlier. So now go ahead and you can start to put in, that's a little bit too right, put in some of this into it. And in comparison to what's already happening there, these highlights are going to pop out. And it looks to me like we're also on the fifth part, midtones. Spencer is now about to do the final blend of this session where he's going to go in and start bl blending the top of the hat. So go ahead and nice Spencer. Okay. Yeah, the drip is about to happen. Nice. <laughs> that brings us to stage seven of this painting where we're going to go and do what we want to do now is put in the final details and fix up the mistakes you made earlier, embrace the ones that are happy accidents and finish the painting. So we've got some darker areas. For instance, this part here is going to be dark. But then, and then also dark once again, sort of down here. But then you're going to get lighter towards the left side of the eyeball. So here, and then also here. Now, what I want you to do, and this is really what's going to bring it together, wait till you see guys how much this does for the painting, is one little highlight, and put that one little highlight right down there, just dot it. One little dot. Now, the reason I don't think what you just did worked is because you put them in the exact same area. When I said one little dot, you did two. Oh, I thought you said I thought, All it takes I thought you meant for dot. each. No. Fuck! You fucked up, dude. You fucked up, but that's okay. It's easy to fix. One highlight is occurring here, but if we do it in the exact same place, in the eye over there, it might kind of feel a little bit not real. So let's go ahead and put the other highlight up a bit more, like there. So I went ahead and I laid down the glow, and now the glow is there. Now the dots are going to have much more impact. So check this one out. Now it has more of an impact. All right, so now that we're working on the final details, I'm gonna ask you the final question. What is your dream? Be inspired and inspire other people and you know, make a living doing what I like doing. You know, I always thought it'd be cool if I could grow up and be like Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> And scene. Alright, can yeah. you pay me for saying that now? Be a good person. Wholesome as fuck. Hell yeah, Sir Spence. Well, shall we take a look at the painting? Yeah, baby, yes! Not fucking bad, Spencer, not bad. Here we have Sir Spence, the beautiful, incredible oil painter in the flesh. Let's go. Here we got Sir Spence, the oil painter, and his beautiful painting. Well done, Sir Spence, and thank you for coming on Painting with Brooks. That's all, folks. Thank you.